G'day and welcome back to my hobby room. Now, it is no secret if you watch my channel that I love Airfix kits, and in particular, Airfix sailing ship kits. In fact, I've just about finished the St. Louis, and this kit was tooled in 1973. And that's my favourite period, the 60s to 70s. That is my favourite period, so that's when this one came out. And it's just got a bit more string to go on it. I mean, it won't take that long. But I got asked to jump ahead and start on the Prince. And the Prince, this is another Airfix kit, different scale. We think this is about a 1180. And I'm working on replacing the uh, awfully warped and very badly detailed plastic decks, which we forgive Airfix. Normally I put wood planks on, I've got wood veneer planks. But I'm 3D printing these parts because there was a terrible tragedy. And the thing is, that kit's over 50 years old and it, uh, it had a bit of a warpage and when I actually just went for a dry fit, snapped. But this can happen. The old Airfix plastic is now getting very brittle. That's okay. Nothing we can't handle. And now I've got the 3D printer. I mean, I would have in the past just got out a sheet of store and <laughs> cut out a new part, dropped it in. No problems at all. Bingo bongo, okay? With the 3D printer now, I can not only print a new plastic part, I can print in wood. But more about that later. We'll actually have a wood deck made out of wood. Well, that'd be nice. Now, way back in the 60s, my very first sailing ship kit was the Airfix Golden Hind. And even then, that wasn't a new kit. That first came out in a little baggy form in 1952. It is what Airfix calls their very first proper kit. I know there was a tractor before that, right? They did this little tractor thing, but that was a promotional product for Mackie Ferguson, right? So that's what they did that for, and it was sort of so complex, they eventually had to break it into bits and you had to kind of put it together. And they went, hang on, we're onto something here. Plastic kits. Because <laughs> prior to that, they used to make combs. Can you believe it? Combs, yeah. Plastic combs. Yes, that's where Airfix came from. Combing around all the people with the slick hair in the 50s. Anyhow, Airfix put out 1952 The Golden Hind, which was this baggy one, right? And then I picked up a slightly more modern version of the baggy one in about the mid-60s. And I thoroughly enjoyed the kit. But I never got to build the 70s version, which was much larger. I mean, the little baggy one's only 1 300 scale. But the big kit is 172nd. So that is a lot, lot bigger. And I think the Golden High needs to be built in 172nd scale because it's a small ship. I mean, it's not very big at all. You know? So the 172nd scale kit should be just right. Now, as I said, I never got to build it back in the day, but then Airfix just re-released Vintage Classic, the kits, because they stopped punching them out or moulding them in about the late 1990s, right? So there hadn't been any 21st century releases, even in red boxes. So this supposedly is a cleaned up, fixed up, shut up kit of the Golden Hind. Let's see how good these Vintage Classics are. Roll the music. So, what do we get for our hard-earned shekels? Well, it's a big box. As you can see, I'm having to crane over it here with the camera. And you get the usual blurb down the side here. Don't know if they put the years on here. Uh, made in 1977. There you go. There you go. They tell you when it was made. And it's got 100 pieces. 109. What's nine pieces between friends? And you just kind of get a repetition of the whole thing on the side here. And a whole lot of blurb on there and um, a little bit of a history just going. Best known for its global circumcision between 1577 and 1580 by Sir Francis Drake. Yes, yes, he circumscribed the world. He did, he did. Okay, well enough of all that, Harry. What's in the box? Well, some very white sails. I mean, that's unusual because normally the kits I open, the sails are all yellowed for all the years. But you've got some sails, as you can see. They're a fair size, because this is 172nd scale, but it is a small boat. So that's all you get. That's all the sails you need. Nothing more. Here we go. Now, as you say, this hull, at least in length, is not much different to the prints that I just showed you and the St. Louis. They're both about the same sort of length, but you're getting more draft, right? Okay. You don't want a draft? Your uh, moustache will fall off, Harry. No, 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 not that kind of draft. This bit down the bottom here is called draft, okay? So from the whale line down, that's draft, the bit in the water, okay? So whale lines are the bits here, which they, you know, bang up against whales. I don't know, it's got a reason why they're called whale lines, but I forget. But, um, yeah, you like little bump lines. They're like a little bumper bars on the side of the boat. Anyhow, they're called whale lines. 
bit of a quick dry fit here and you can see it is going to build into quite a good size chip. Yep, especially once you have the bow spread at the front. So this will be quite impressive in the cabinet. I think by the time it has everything on it, it's going to be a lot bigger than those other ships, but that's okay. It's going to look good. It'll uh, look nice next to my 170 second scale Nessie <laughs> and Kraken. Now you get the instructions. Now, did they leave them as they were? Well, they've made them into a book, which would be a bit different. Well, they've kind of kept the original drawings. So I'll see if I can try and find a photo what the original instructions would look like because from my memory with this period and some of the ones I've seen, you get one page with everything. It's all exploded. Right? That's it. 109 parts, glow together. <laughs> Luckily, as I always say, if it does everything in number order. So one, two, three, and away you go. And they want you to put the stand on straight away and put the deck in. As you know, if you've watched me build the ships, I will do a whole lot of work to the deck. Probably not do it as a great big piece. Wood planking, that sort of thing, veneer. And I will paint up the hull halves before I even put this together. I do a lot of prep work before we even think about gluing. And as far as the stand goes, nah. I'll sort of do some pedestals or something. I might even 3D print some this time. Bulkheads will then go in. Those two will all be pre-painted before I put this thing together. So the bulkheads go in. And that lovely stern piece, which we'll show you in a sec. So, look. How about we get the parts out? And then, as I talk about it, we can, uh, we can sort of see what everything is. Because, well, nothing much has been... Well, it's a zippy bag. Nothing much has been pulled out. Look at that, it's thick. See the width of the planks? See, that's great. 170 second scale. You're going to get reasonably solid about 4mm wide planking which is actually accurate for the scales. That's pretty good. And there's a little bit of detail here. I mean, there wasn't a huge amount of detail in these kits in the day. They were good. They built up nice out of the box. But boy, you could add all kinds of things to them and make them look really fantastic. That was the thing. You see my builds. Get some string. Yeah. Let's throw a bit of string in there. And look, for that person that complained, ah, oh, you don't put white string on a boat. Yeah, it's white to start with. And then you use a paintbrush called a Duriga. And you make some black and you make some brown and you colour it to whatever you need. So I only usually leave the white on for illustration purposes. Squeak, 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 squeak. Uh, right. Well, there is quite a ton of plastic in here. There's a few bits here that I've got in a loose bag, including, oh, we've got a, looks like we've got a drake. We've got a drake. That'd be nice. So, yeah, we've got a couple of bags here. And we have, I don't know if they are waterline transfers. They almost look like it. But these would be your flags, obviously. And I would normally... Actually, they look like they're stickers and they peel off. Well, they're pre-cut. So we'll have a look at those in a while and see how you go. Normally, I glue them together on a piece of alpha or something so you can twist them into nice shapes. All right, let's get the parts out. First things first, the suicide count. Yes, because... Being old Airfix kits, and it would have all been in this big bag. Like that's one big bag there. It would have all been in that and those other bags. I must have rebagged stuff later on after I first got it. Because this was a brand new release. Uh, you know, I, I bought it new, not second hand. So the um, one of my bulkheads is loose. There's a nice amount of detail on there. Now, one thing is there's a whole lot of triangles. We had this on the Revenge, which is another one of Drake ships from that period. And they have all these little triangles all different colours. There's a trick to that. What you do is you paint the light colour on, whatever the triangle set does, because it's like one light, one dark. And then you come back and you cut out little triangles out of paper and you just glue them in. So you paint up a whole sheet, the dark colour, measure up, make sure you've got accurate little triangles, and away you go. You put them on. And that works really well. I've seen people do it. It's a really fast way of doing it. If you're great with the brush and you've got steady hands, yeah, go for it. You'll probably get in there. I mean, Posca pens, I might be able to do it just because there is a little line. But the triangle method is proven and it is idiot proof. And I can attest to that being an idiot. Now, in the suicide parts, well, there's one little, or well, little, it's the biggest one that I've actually had any of the kits. But there's one gun garage. So that's uh, ready to go. So this is going to be a good size to work on when I get to this kit. All right. Won't be straight away. I've got a few other things to get out of the way. Maybe we'll do it next year. Don't know. So here we go. And there's Drake. Oh, yes. There he is. Looking like... He needs to sort of, where's the privy? Where's the privy? I need to go to the privy now. Now, there are a few little bits and bobs in there, but nothing really sort of to worry about, but I found them. Not as many as I often get. Now, I'm not quite sure what this is. It could just be a piece of flesh, but it kind of looks like it actually should be a part. It's rather thick for flesh. So that's broken off something. We'll have to find out where that goes. 
So back to the instructions, and FX gives a much more detailed sort of description here, because basically this thing was put down in August of 1578, but it was originally going to be called the Pelican, you see? And it wasn't until much later on, when actually Drake was down at the... Um, do we fell go to do we do whatever the bottom of South Omega, you know, Del de Fuego, whatever, the devil's whatever, the devil's rocks, the devil whatever, devil's balls. That little pointy bit at the bottom of South America, and they were trying to get through that, and they lost two of the ships out of the three ship fleet, and only the uh, Pelican got through. And then, well, that's usually unlucky. Drake renamed it the Golden Hind, so that's a that's a strange one. But then again, he was the um, the guy whose crest is on the boat. He put all the money in, so. Maybe that's why he did it. Anyway, Greg then went on and uh, basically uh, privateered, although he was called a pirate, but basically he privateered, got a whole ton of bloody gold off all the Spanish ships down there, absolutely decimated them, managed to sneak his way back through past India and around Africa, got home to England three years later. Everyone thought he'd been dead. They thought, you know, the ships had gone. One of the three of those ships that tried to go around the, uh, the turn of South America, it managed to make its way back to England, and it basically said, look, the other two are gone. So they thought Drake was dead, but he wasn't. He wasn't. He got back, and he said, look, here you go, Queenie. You can have half my plunder. And half of the gold that he found was more than the entire debt for a year for England at the time. It was a literal fortune, trillions of dollars in today's money. So he became a wealthy man, and the Queen loved him a lot. In fact, she loved him so much, she knighted him. That's why we call him Sir Francis Drake. Well, there you go. History lesson over. All right, usual sort of thing. We've already sort of looked at some of these big parts, and there's bulkheads in there. We'll find those. Let's have a look. What do these bulkheads look like? They'll be in here somewhere. Oh, here we go. Here's a sprue. Oh, these are big sprues, aren't they? They're big sprues. So here's the rest of your bulkheads. Upside down, Miss Pat. And there's basic detail on them. But they'll paint up and you can sort of weather them and do a few things. You can really put a lot more into a ship like this than some of those small scale ones. With the small scale ones, you kind of weather them, they look a bit silly. But something this scale, you can weather it. So you've got bulkheads, you've got edge facings here, we've got rudders. Uh, that would be a nameplate. I don't always like them, they're a bit sort of you know, tacky. We've got that. Now, rigging's going to be good because the rigging is going to be big. Much bigger than other things. So there you go, cannon port lids, we've got all that. So that's a, that's a fun little spray. Let's see what else we've got in our instructions. So flipping over the page. Well, there's that rudder, it goes together. We had a look at that. And this is that back area there, which I showed you some of those pieces, although there'll be a, a walk, right? A little balcony walk goes to the back there. And so they can go for an evening stroll and they can, you know, um, take in a bit of. South American tobacco they found. Of course, it wouldn't be smoking it. We wouldn't say that. Can't say that in this channel. No. And there you can see that is the hind, right? The golden hind. Right? Which I think means deer. Is it? Let me know. I think it's just a deer. Golden deer. Um, so, yep, those pieces go on. There's the rest of those little fittings on there. So there's not much to it. A cannon there. Let's see if we can find the rest of those cannons. Oh, they're going to be a good size to play with. Look at those. They're going to be good. Oh, look. These are fighting platforms up here. They look kind of fun. They're a good size. We've got to paint those up. We've got somebody else here. It's a ninja warrior. Ha, ah, monkey. Don't know what he's doing. He might be pulling on a rope or something. Who knows what he's doing there. And again, we've got uh, more dead eyes with channels in. Although I will replace all those. Interestingly, they have the heart-shaped ones, you see. They've got the little heart-shaped ones. They point at one end. So we'll have a look. That's uh, probably correct for the period. And we've got all the cannons for the lower areas where we won't have any detail in the hull. Have a look. Yeah, Airfix has done its usual trick where there's just nothing behind there. You paint that black and you whack your cannon on. Whatever colour you want. You can have it bronze, you can have it brass, you can have it black. Just please yourself. Just don't whinge to me in the comments about it. <laughs> oh, there's not much detail here on the inside of the gunnels. We'll, um, we'll have to do something about that. We'll have to add, usually there's some ribbing, that sort of thing. Especially at this scale, it'll be seen. So we'll probably add some vertical ribs, that sort of thing, that would have gone through and make it a little bit more interesting. And again, you've got lots and lots of these little triangles here, but Airfix has marked them out. I think you can see them there. It's a bit fine. But the little triangle areas and everything all marked out so that um, you can pick them out. We've got wood planking, which is rather good. And again, I'll do my usual wooden tricks. The bottom of the hull will be white. It will not be copper. They didn't start coppering until the late, um, well, basically, middle, early 18th century was when the sort of the copper went in. 
and only if they could afford it. It's like the bounty, you know, a lot of people think the bounty had copper. Probably not. They probably couldn't have afforded it. It was only a tiny little transport ship. It's unlikely they would have copied it. So I usually do one white. The white is not just white paint. It is white lead paint. And that is why it's anti-corrosive. That's what they used. Moving on to instructions, we've got anchors and then we go over and yes, you'll be putting in all the cannons and you're starting to put in some belay points and that sort of thing. And all the channels, right? Channels go in there and they've already got pretend chain on and they've got the basically the channel lines and the um, dead eyes there already. But I'll rip all that off and I'll use. Thing. These are cat's heads. They are called cat's heads. Yep. They stick out the side there. Basically, they're there so that you can hoist up something like the anchor. All right. So you'll have your capstan with your um, your line, which will come out of a uh, a horse there, and it'll run over and into a pulley, and then it'll drop down from there, and you'll put the anchor on that. And then they have a little question mark: Do you want your cannon ports closed, or do you want them open? Of course, you want them open. You want all the cannons sticking out. I paid for these damn cannons. I'm going to use them. So yeah, you move on, and it's a repeat on that side. Do all the same again. Now the kit has been fairly clean for the most part, but yes, there is some flash. And it's, you know, oh, it's such a drama to remove. Oh, look at that. It's gone. Yes, people that whinge about flash, often it just falls right off. It's not a big deal, especially with these kits. Here's a part that a lot of people like to uh, talk about. It's not the poop deck, but it's the deck where they did the pooping. Yes, it's the heads. So this is the heads of the ship where they would sit and the sailors would poop over it. And why is it at the bow? Because the wind comes this way, right? The wind comes from the stern, blows to the bow. So all the pooping smell goes out to sea. You don't want all that pooping smell. No, not at all. And we missed this spruce sort of in detail. There's those anchors. They're all one piece anchors. They kind of look more modern than the ones of the period. I might research that, but I'm not terribly worried. Oh, well, you do have the top part and they fit to the, the metal part. So this is often wood, sometimes it's metal, and this is always sort of cast metal. I'll have a look at that, and that would be iron, and no brass anchors, that was, unless it's an ornamental ship. And you've got a little uh, tub there, and that's where they play roll out the barrel. Yep, yep, yep. Who knows? There's the rest of those um, cannon trucks. So there's only four cannon trucks on this, so you've only got four cannons on deck, but you've got lots of minor guns everywhere where you're supposed to have. Now, here's basically, we're getting towards the end of the instructions and this is basically the stern with the transom and then you get to see the, the hind there she is and you get to see the heraldry there now it wouldn't have been sir francis drakes at this time because he wasn't a sir he wasn't allowed to have heraldry he was just a common man right it wasn't until after he got back from his circumcision and he presented all that money to queen elizabeth and she went yippee Thank you for the one trillion dollars. Here, have a knighthood. And he was actually knighted on board the Golden Hind. And then he became a sir. Mars, 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 yards, 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 yards. Oh, look. There's not as many as on most of the ships that I'm building because you only go up two levels. Oh, look, here we go. Here's another little ninja warrior. Oh, yeah. And then you've got a guy here who brings on the beer. Well, rum, I suppose. It's a ship. Yes, rum. This is basically the rum carrier. Arr. So... Your last section, you're just using all those spars and masts and you put them all together and in the fighting platforms, you'll make up the masts and then look, you stick them on. It's really not that hard. So it's only got a mainsail, uh, you know, a lower sail and an upper sail. That's it. So lower and upper sails, that's all it had. They didn't, uh, they didn't really run them up the top there this period and the stern sail on the mizzen mast is just one triangle. And that's how they steered the ship. They had none of the forward um, little sort of pointy out ones that came. That was the next century. That's, you know, the Prince and the St. Louis, and things like that. It's the next century they've got those. So there you are. That's it. Oh, I tell you what the figures are. Figures, positions, optional. Really? Well, it looks like they're how... How can they be optional? That's how they are. Do you mean figures are optional? Who knows? Who knows? Now, you... Um, Get a nice little diagram showing you how to do the shrouds, right? Those are the shrouds. The rat lines go across. I've told you this a number of times. Rat lines go across. 
So you just get some rudimentary rigging here, basically just some braces and some forward stays, and that look quite nice, just putting those in. I mean, by the time you've added your shrouds and your rat lines, that's not too bad. But there is a lot more rigging that went on these ships, and of course I would, I would do that myself. It also shows you how to tie up the anchor, which is correct. See, you've got the big anchor rope coming through the horses there, okay? And they're not horses like, nee! oh, horses, horses. And you've got some binding there, for your bowsprit so that stops it being sort of flinging away and it usually tucks through a little hole there in the splitter at the front so that's all good and what they've suggest to make it easy for you know the youngkins that do this is you use their um, sort of dead eyes that are on a pretend sort of channel line thing and you just run the thread through the top of them and then tie it up and it's easy so that that really should have been back here when you do this that's sort of what that's all about um, but they do sort of show it there and that works, and that gets you a result. That's what you get. Then there's their sails and flags. They're saying, yeah, uh, get the flags out, get them off that thing, put them on a bit of string, glue them together. Yep. I'll put mine on a bit of aluminium because it just gives a bit of weight to them and you get some lovely curves. Sails, there's not many, and there's your sails. I probably wouldn't use them. Nothing wrong with them. I mean, you can still get a good effect. You can just sort of paint them a little bit yellowish and everything to get the look. I remember the kit that I had, the 1300 scale, had stickers to go on the sails, which, you know, had big chains and things and crosses and all the rest of it, which is what um, Drake was using. So they don't really have that with this kit. They're just going with plain coloured sails. But who knows? Who knows if that was a thing or that was just something fun they gave us as kits. And that's basically it. There you go. Well, they've got the how to use the rigging tool. I may have had one in this, but I probably gave it away to someone because I don't like them. So there you go. I have a video on how to use these Heller's rigging tools, but they are highly inaccurate. They waste a lot of cordage. I don't really like them. And, you know, my rat heart was the solution. I come up with this much better. And there you go. Finally, you paint it. Well, you'd be painting it all the while you're building it. You can't, like with any of the ships, especially like battleships and everything, if you think you build the kit and then paint it like a tank, it's really difficult, really. You've got to paint as you go. It's like building a model car, right? You know, you paint things. So you paint the hull halves up as much as you can and put them together. You paint the deck before you even put it in. You do all that, paint up your transom and all those sort of details there. Same sort of thing. So when you put it together, parts are coloured and they're going in and there's just a little bit of touch up. And it works. It works and you get a much, much better result. Well, what do you think of that? She's a great little kit, isn't she? Considering it was tool back in the early 70s. And I mean, that's 50 years ago. But still, the plastic's new and they've taken the trouble to make sure the kit is as good, if not better, than when it was first released. So I'm pretty impressed. Pretty impressed with that. She's great. All right. Well, I hope you've enjoyed the journey of looking back at this kit with me. I am still building the prints. Video will be out. I am going to do the Airfix Hercules. Heracles, 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 <laughs> 10,000 views, we're nearly there, once we get to those 10,000, yep, there will be a Heracles build video, but for the moment, it's ships, and we'll get a few sailing ships, 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 we'll just get a few sailing ships sort of builds out the way, then I'll get to the battleships, which I know a lot of you are waiting for, don't worry, they're not going anywhere, Airfix War Spite, coming up probably at the end of the month, so yes, just a bit more patience, a bit more patience, all right, look, um, Buttons, buttons. My whole life are ruled by buttons, as you well know. It's just buttons, effing buttons. You know, just do it. <laughs> and, and if you really want to help me out, boom, buy me a curry. Yes, I always enjoy a good curry. I mean, this girth doesn't make itself. <laughs> so, look, that's about all I've got to say. And I hope you, like me, enjoy these lovely old classic kits. And I'll keep reviewing them, I'll keep finding them, and I'll keep showing them to you. Because, look, even if I'm the only person who watches the video, I don't care. I love these kits. All right, that's enough. Goodbye from Australia, and it's Huru from Harry and Eddie. Bask, you've got to leave that hole. I've got to go. Bask is wrecking something.